Hello and welcome back. I want to show you two things that I think come in really handy if you are in a bus. One is the Burton Max little countertop single burner induction cooktop. This thing rocks. And the Kilowatt, a great little meter for determining energy consumption, power usage of any device. I think this is worth the 25 or 30 bucks to have. I'll show you how I use it and show you how this cooktop works. Did I say this thing rocks? I love it. This is not the inside of a bus, but I wanted to show you something. I've been a little behind on videos while I work on a bus project that I am behind on. With COVID uh, running through the family here and, and all of that, I'm just a little bit behind. But getting back in the swing of things, and I wanted to share this Burton induction cooktop. It's sitting on top of the stove. We lived inside our MCI for about 11 months and used this as our primary cooktop. There was a propane uh, little range in there, but I really love this thing. It'll get super hot. You can sear a steak with it, or you can dial it down and just pick a temperature and have it simmer at 110 if you want. But to show you how efficient it is, I'm going to use kilowatt, get a little flashlight, oh, a little light, uh, there. The kilowatt is a handy little meter, and I think if you are trying to set up a, a solar system or an energy system for a bus, it's worth the 25 or 30 bucks that these things cost. We used them quite a bit in my last career for analyzing energy draw. So right now it's showing how many volts are present in the plug there. If I change this to watts, it'll show me. So right now it's drawing 0.7 watts. So you wouldn't want to leave this plugged in all the time. You've got that phantom load. But the handy thing is you can push this button and it'll show you, oh, where's the light there? It'll show you kilowatt hours used. So I'm going to cook a steak. Let's see how much energy this takes. I just am super impressed with this Burton this Burton Max, just a single burner. We used it all the time, never used the propane. Well, we maybe used the oven a couple times in that almost year we were in that bus. But anyway, I'm going to turn this on. The kilowatt recorder is at zero right now. Let's see how much energy it takes to cook a steak. And if you're vegan, uh, it chars vegetables really nicely. You can do all kinds of stuff, but I apologize if you are offended by meat and turn it on. Now you can set this to temperature and pick a temperature, or you can do that and just do one through 10. I'm gonna turn it down. Boils water super fast too, by the way, a lot faster than the propane stove. So I'm gonna put this on four for now and melt some butter. And once the butter's melted, I'll throw the ribeye in there. It's been about 45 seconds maybe, and I'm on level four. It's using 735 watts it's drawing right now. Crank this up so we can sear the outside. Go to eight, maybe. That would be, I guess I can set the temperature. It'll go up to 450 degrees, but I am used to doing this. Just really handy. If you want to simmer something, a soup or a uh, some kind of a broth or anything, and you just want it to simmer at a low temperature, you can set that and it'll just regulate right there. It just works really well. Give that a couple seconds. I'm going to put the camera down, grab the steak and throw it on there. Run level eight, steak is on there. Used uh five one hundredths of a kilowatt hour and we're drawing 920 23 watts
guess it was 703 when I threw this on here. It's a nice sear. It'll go hotter than that if you want. I think like Ruth's Chris does theirs in butter over super hot flame or super hot pan. I do like grilling outside, but if you're in a bus, sometimes you can't do that. And if you want to capture some of the heat and bake it a little bit, throw a lid on there. So we're at 7.06 now. And eight, whoop, focus, eight one hundredths of a kilowatt hour. We'll figure that out at the end how many 12 volt amp hours you're drawing. I give you the warning, this is not a cooking show. After I seared the other side, I turned it down a little bit and I've just got this lid on here to keep the mess down. We did that in a bus, it worked really well. Got the fan going, but there's not a lot of smoke. And we're right now at 0.13 kilowatt hours, which is 130 watt hours a little over a tenth of a kilowatt hour. And then we'll figure out at the end how much energy this would have drawn from our 12 volt battery bank. I do eat my steak kind of medium rare, so I'm gonna take this off now. We're at 7.10 p.m. I think I threw this on here at 7.03, so seven minutes. And I'm gonna turn that off. There, get the glare down, 140 watts, so 0.14 kilowatt hours. That a kilowatt hour is, of course, a thousand watt hours. And we used 0.14 of that, so 140 watt hours. I'll do a little math after I eat. Yum. Well, that was a delicious steak. And again, if you are vegetarian or vegan, that cooktop works really well for vegetables too. It works well for everything. Again, you can simmer at a very low temperature and it will just maintain it. It's super even. It gets hot enough to sear vegetables and meat really nicely. So I like it. It boils water much faster, especially up here at 7,000 feet than a propane cooktop or anything. So. Again, that's what we used. I just wanted to share my experience. So you can tune out now if you want, but if you are new to electrical systems and solar or bus and inverter systems, I'm going to do a little bit of basic math. I should point out, I got my wine to do some math with. Um, my friend Ivan LaCroix here with his lovely wife, Sylvie. This is, uh, I, I, we're just about, identically aligned in all other aspects of bus conversion and bus life and bus builds, except here. He detests, that was his word, detest, the induction cooktop. I love them. I think they're really efficient. They work well. I've had a great experience with it. So I love you, Ivan, but you're wrong. No, you're not wrong. Uh, just different experience. Anyway, one kilowatt hour is a thousand watt hours, of course. Watt is a proper name, so I capitalize it. 0.14 kilowatt hours is 140 watt hours. And watts are a great unit of measurement because they include the voltage. So it's a great way to measure energy, amps or power. Uh, watts are, or energy is power over time. So that's why you got the time component in there anyway. So watt hours are amp hours times volts. So to figure out how many amp hours we're taking out of a 12 volt battery bank with that 140 watt hours of consumption, according to the kilowatt, you take 140, divide it by 12, and we would have drawn 11.66. So <clears throat> with the conversion loss, let's say 12 or 13 amp hours out of our 12 volt battery bank. Pretty small for delicious dinner. All right, I'm not gone yet. I got a little more wine. I had a bit of time to think and I realized I left out something. So again, this is all for people who are new to system design. This figure here, this 
let's call it 12 amp hours that we drew from a 12 volt battery bank. This is helpful for designing the size of your battery bank. So if you've got a 300 amp hour lithium battery bank, you could do a lot of cooking without having to recharge. If you've got a 100 amp hour AGM battery, then you've got about 50 amp hours usable and you just used over a fifth of that, a fifth of that cooking dinner. But of course, you know, then you go overnight, you got your Max Air fan running, you wake up in the morning and then you recharge again. So anyway, this figure is helpful for determining your battery bank sizing. This is the energy consumption. But what about power, which is what you use to determine the inverter size? If you remember when we were looking at that kilowatt, and I don't have it written here, I think it drew 960 watts at max, uh, or at least at what we were cooking. The thing is capable of taking uh, or using up to 1,800 watts. So 1,800 divided by 120 which is the voltage there, is, <laughs> I paused and used the calculator. So 1,800 divided by 120 volts is 15 amps. And that's how much it would be drawing on the 120 volt, the AC side of your inverter. But remember, your inverter is fed by the battery banks on the 12 volt side. So if you took that 1,800 and divided it, divided it by 12 volts, which is the DC side, then of course it's gonna be 15 with a zero. So it's going to draw 150 amps through the cable between the batteries, the 12 volt batteries and your inverter. So you gotta have heavy duty, heavy duty cables. I should get more wine. Anyway, this is helpful for designing, uh, figuring out the wire sizing and fusing and everything. But we know that 1800 watts is the max that this cooktop will draw. If you have a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, you should be in good shape. And there you go. So this figure here is helpful for determining the inverter size. This is helpful for determining how long your batteries can last and your battery bank sizing. And there you go. Again, delicious meal. Thanks for following. Thanks for joining. And I'll have some more bus videos soon.